Only now, after our final expansion is done and we've hooked up the base to plentiful new resources, it is finally feasible again to continue with the infinite research projects. So that means it is finally time to start launching rockets. Not to win the game, as the single launch by itself has nothing to do with the victory conditions we set for ourselves, but purely as a means to start producing the final science pack of space science. Now, before starting on the fun projects, we are first again gonna grab the useful stuff. A couple of cheap upgrades to the worker bot speed and the cheapest mining productivity upgrade, so production will keep up at full speed for longer. Our fully operational base is looking mightily fine in the night. But it does become very apparent why we need our plant outpost for steel and green chips sooner rather than later. Currently half of the main base's copper is converted into green chips and most of the iron will be converted into steel once the current backlog dries up. Because now that we are researching again, our resource consumption and science production is running at full speed. It's not exactly the right ratio, but the slowest assemblers are running at 84 signs per minute. But even with everything running, we still aren't using much of our tileable nuclear plant's maximum capacity yet. Maybe it was a mistake to do the artillery field test on Biter Island. These two Biter nests here are eating up 300 pollution per minute for free, without sending in attacks. They basically are functioning as a sort of super forest, absorbing our pollution with no negative side effects. Anyway, in the end it doesn't even matter, as we can't rely on that forever. Eventually all biters will have to depart to the eternal biter hunting grounds. Well, our next project will take a while to set up, so before that we quickly adjust the uranium enrichment setup to be fully automatic. We wire the Coverex enrichment centrifuges so that they will only stop running after the amount of shiny green rocks equals the amount of non-shiny green rocks. A quick glance shows that is going to take quite a while still. So, now for the big project. With all the furnaces active, all iron and copper are being consumed and more than half of the available iron and copper are going towards steel and green chips. So yep, it is finally time to set up the autonomous outpost for steel and green chips to relieve the main base. Well, the cheapest robot speed and mining speed upgrades have already finished. The truth is, it will still be a while before we need the artillery range upgrades. We are just not ready yet. So for now we are just going to keep investing in faster bots and richer mining production. Under the atmospheric light of launching rockets into orbit, we spent some time setting the right logistics requests for all three spiders in order to build the Green Steel Corporation outpost. Alright, all requests are set up. Spider Ben is the mining spider. The Black Widow is the smelting spider. 
and the white recluse is the factory spider. And yes, that does look like rails and train fuel in there. So let's step into the light and have the bot supply us with all the things. before we head out to the Far Lands. Now, building balancers is my weak point, but I think I build a 1 to 6 splitter. Let's give it a quick test. Looks good to me, so let's plop one down for each train wagon. What? Train wagon? Are the rumors true? Has Michael Hendricks finally seen the light? Well, hold your horses, nerd. That soothing light at the end of the tunnel is just the freight train coming your way. It's just a single train, okay? Just a single hit. It's nothing serious. I'm not addicted now. Go away. Let's instead focus on designing the steel smelter. This process illustrates well why I don't have a full Robopod grid in my base. It can work well if you use pre-made blueprints, but I like to be able to work on designs without construction bots flying in and out, partially constructing and deconstructing stuff and just generally getting in the way. There, that's one half of the whopping 480 furnaces we need to turn 4 belts of iron ore into almost one full belt of steel, fully designed from scratch in less than 90 seconds. Now we just gotta actually build it in a more convenient location. Of course, knowing me, the ratios are off again, given that we use productivity modules, and while I could try to care and use slightly less iron furnaces before fiddling around with redistributing the extra iron plates, while trying not to screw up due to factors like insert on near side of the belt priority and whatnot, but meh. This design is quick and simple, does what it needs to do, and I'd rather spend that extra time on the next three projects instead. Noise. We have upgraded from 200 to 300 personal robots, by the way. And we've rebuilt the train station so the steel output belts conveniently connect to the train. And nope, we were not really producing 84 signs per minute sustained. Our science pack buffer ran out and tax load will crawl again exactly because we're lacking steel and green chips. So let's cancel the expensive tax for now, so we can buffer up and later quickly research whatever we need most at that time. <sighs> Suppose we would like to keep the option of adding one more line of smelters to the south. Well, there's just one tile too little space. So I drain my entire armor's battery to move the whole damn thing two tiles up. Well, better do it now while everything is still shiny new and empty, than later with belts full of ore and furnaces full of plates.
My green chip setup is a little weird again, but thanks to the stacking productivity bonus, even with just the Mark 1 modules, 40 green chip assemblers can produce just over 3 red belts of green chips from just 3.5 red belts of copper input. Again, technically we would not need 60, but only 52 copper wire assemblers to feed the 40 green chip assemblers. But also again, good luck properly and reliably redistributing that. Instead we go by the KISS motto, or keep it simple stupid. Our goal is to supply the main base with 3 red belts of green chips, which is equal to 2 blue belts. So what seems the most simple solution to load 2 cargo wagons with 3 red belts worth of green chips supplied by 4 non-compressed red belts? I say let's just sideload 2 blue belts and be done with it. Let's build the first mine dedicated for steel production. At mining productivity 5 we need 160 miners to supply 4 red belts of ore. So this mine by itself is not quite enough yet, but it's a good start. Let's connect it to the steel furnaces and switch it on. Wait, what is this weird squiggle doing here? Anyway, it seems like it's working as intended. Though not at full speed yet, until we connect the other mine. So, let's do just that. Together, these two mines will provide 4 full belts of ore for a long time, even as some of the poorest miners run out. That's why we had the weird squiggle. We are sideloading the belts with the backup mine, which ensures the belt will be 100% full 100% of the time. We can even visualize that with the show gaps in transport belts debug help. There are tons of gaps before the sideload compression technique, and absolutely none after the sideloading. Fully compressed belts are surprisingly UPS friendly too by the way, even if they are very long. With the steel setup finished, we can finally take the first train ride of the game. Let's deliver the first load of steel to the main base in our trusty Now the steel belt from the outpost is hooked up so that the outpost steel is prioritized. Once the main base steel furnaces fill up, their production will stop and all of the three red belts of iron in the main base will be freed up for non-steel purposes. Great stuff! Now we just need to do the same for green chips to relieve copper.
So we build the three mines for the green chip setup. So we build the three mines for the green chip setup. And to save a little space, we use lightly speed beacon smelters to supply the green chip build, the 3.4 bells of copper and 2.6 bells of iron it needs to function at full speed. Yeah, ratios get weird once productivity modules enter the scene. So my usual technique is to slightly overbuild every step to ensure the final production goal is reliably met. In this case our setup is capable of producing slightly more than 3 red bells of green chips and then we intentionally bottleneck the throughput at 2 blue bells, which means the green chip production should slowly back up. And indeed we are producing 2 compressed blue bells of green chips. Or are we? Something seems off. The blue inserters are not keeping up, let's try stack inserters then. Ok, that works it seems. Anyway, the train arrives. Let's ride it back to the base with the first externally produced green chips. So we can just flip the steel unloading blueprint and upgrade it to blue belts. Or can we? Something seems off. Anyway, with the new green chip build also operational, we connect the blue belts from the train to the main bus. And we decide to fully decommission the main base's green chip setup. Now, we didn't plan ahead space for the pair of green chip belts however. So for now they're running a bit awkwardly through the manufacturing hub. Oh well, let's switch it on. Oh, that's what was wrong. Well, easy fix. And finally, we have not one, but three compressed red bells worth of green chips at our disposal. As well as one red belt of steel and the total iron and copper production in the main base freed up for other purposes. Our total iron and copper ore intake tripled. It went from 5 belts at the main base to about 15 belts with the new outpost included. That means our little outpost is processing about twice the iron and copper of the so-called main base. But anyway, this will be a great boost for both red and blue chips.
as well as the base being able to sustain full speed science production now. Great things are to come.